Welcome back. Um, today I want to talk about NOPLAT. NOPLAT stands for Net Operating Profit Less Adjusted Taxes. So the focus is on, on an operating profit generated from your core operations of your business and we account for taxes, but we do not use reported taxes because they are very delicate to use. We do our own tax adjustment. So the main idea behind NOPLET is to focus on the money you make from an entirely business perspective. So we move away from um, accounting principles and we actually really want to ask us what is the core activity of a business? What is actually coming in from your operations? Yeah, so as an example, if you run a retail business and you earn some money on a bank account, you achieve some interest income there, that is not co-operating income. Yeah, it's not done in your retail business, it's generated on your bank account. This would be a financial income. It's still income, but it's financial and it does not reflect your operations. So the main focus is um, whatever is, is your core activity should be reflected in your NOPLAT, the money you make from your business. So it's very important to distinguish between operating and non-operating items. So the, this is the main work we do when it comes to understanding um, value in companies. We have to actually go into the income statement and see um, how much of it um, is um, operating um, and what is non-operating. So this is an example. We will go through many examples in this course um, and they get more and more um, complex. But um, that gives you a rough idea what we are looking for. Yeah? So for instance, here in reported figures, we have revenues at 1000. We have operating costs at 900. We have restructuring charges. We have a sale of a factory. We have interest income and interest expense. And then we have reported taxes. And the net profit would be, in this case, um, 160. So now, um, what do we consider to be operating? So how do we um, think about this um, in this particular case? The first item, well, revenues are usually operating. Again, if it refers to your core activity. Sometimes you analyze um, companies that operate across a wide range of services and products, and you might need to sometimes split revenues. Um, in particular, if um, the business um, is a combination of maybe banking activities and other non-banking activities. But in almost all the cases you will analyze, revenues would be considered as operating. The same applies to operating costs. However, restructuring charges, they are not operating and not part of NOPLET because they are non-recurring items. Now, non-recurring items um, refer to activities that are one-off. So you don't um, expect them to continue year after year. The same applies to, to selling a factory or selling assets. Um, these are one-off activities. And they might be linked to um, a financial transaction, for instance, but they're not cooperating activities. Now, of course, it always depends on your context. So what is the core business? Yeah, so for instance, if your core business is buying and selling assets, that's a different matter. Yeah? But if we look at, for instance, a retail business where you sell a store, um, that would be um, a non-core activity and it would be certainly um, non-recurring. You wouldn't expect selling stores forever into the future because at one point the business would just um, cease to exist. So you have to um, focus on these aspects item by item 
and decide whether this is an item which is recurring or non-recurring. If it's non-recurring, it would not be in included in the NOPLAT calculation. Now, for instance, restructuring charges happen a lot um, if you um, want to cut down on your staff base and you have to pay some compensation, for instance. This would be a restructuring charge, but these um, charges are one-off items and it's unlikely to continue. So the main thing we want to do going forward is we want to understand future cash flows and no plat is one um, element of understanding future cash flows. And to understand the future of cash flows, we have to understand actually what is an ongoing activity and what is a one-off um, event. So this is why we um, remove um, all of these items which are not expected to occur again and again in future. The other aspect we um, have to consider is taxation. So when you do valuation models, you do not um, go um, into reported taxes because reported taxes are influenced by many, many different um, aspects um, of um, the tax code. Yeah, for instance, um, rules um, around depreciation, um, which are highly complicated. And also these um, reported taxes, they can be timed. So you might be able to smooth your income by um, using um, tax breaks, um, short-term tax breaks, um, which you might need to pay for later. So what we tend to use is we use um, a fixed um, tax rate, um, which um, we um, apply to our um, profits before tax. The financial income and expense, which you also see here in this example, are again not cooperating, except we talk about banking and we don't talk about banking in this course because banks have to be um, modeled very differently using um, different principles. So income from financial activities and also interest you pay on your debt are non-operating. Of course, they will be part of your um, profit before tax, so you can deduct them and there are tax implications, but they're not part of your core operation. And as I said before, for taxes, we would apply um, a so-called marginal tax rate. Um, and in most countries, it would be somewhere around um, 30 to 35 percent. But this, of course, depends on um, the current level of corporate tax. Yeah, for instance, the UK at the moment, you have a corporate tax rate of 19%. However, um, because of um, expected increases, this might go up to maybe 25, 26% in future. Now, in terms of um, the financial items, um, we um, would not put this into no plan. We would be not um, focused on that to understand the operations of the business. But of course, they are not ignored. You still have to pay your, your interest expense and they do matter a lot later when we talk about financial sustainability of a business. But not to assess um, the operations of the business. So that's a separate um, issue which we um, have to focus on um, in terms of our financial modeling. Now, um, later, um, we will um, do an exercise based on a data from um, a Kellogg um, company and we try to uh, derive NOPLAT um, based on the discussion we just had. In addition, we also look at cost ratios and we covered this um, already in the first unit. But this is quite important to analyze the different components of NOPLAT. So there are in particular two cost ratios I would focus on um, if I talk about a non-bank. I would look at cost of goods sold divided by revenue and sales general and administrative expenses divided by revenue. The first one, cost of goods sold divided by revenue, is a measure of variable costs. Yeah, so you would usually expect if your, if your revenue goes up, your cost of goods sold should also go up. So you would expect that this ratio is more or less stable, you know, giving you an idea about, um, you know, your profit margins. 
Now the SG&A is a bit different. So these are overhead costs, you know, central costs, um, more or less fixed, not quite. Nothing is really 100% fixed. And this gives you an idea about um, how expensive your overheads are. And these costs are very useful to understand in particular when it comes to restructuring of business and mergers and acquisitions, because here there are differences in terms of expected cost reductions you could achieve, so-called synergies. Now, what are the drivers of um, NOPLAT? So when you um, look at NOPLAT, at the NOPLAT calculation, you could break it down um, into some cost ratios and um, revenue growth. Yeah? So if you increase the business and you maintain your cost ratios, your NOPLAT will go up. If you maintain your revenue and you cut costs, your NOPLAT will go up. So there are different drivers of NOPLAT. So basically it's, um, it's partly driven by cost efficiency. So this is an issue of prof profitability um, and the way you grow your top line, your revenue. So this is just an example now um, based on um, Kellogg. Um, where you see a significant change in the cost structure, in particular in the case of fixed costs, they have declined consistently over time. The variable costs are more or less um, similar um, and they don't show any clear long-term trend.